Reconciliation of Book and Taxable Income Problem 2. Pineapple Corporation has financial accounting book income of $424,000. Book income reflects $130,000 federal income tax expense and $55,000 of depreciation expense. Tax depreciation expense computed under makers is $65,000. Pineapple received $25,000 of prepaid rent not included in book income. Based only on these items, compute Pineapple's taxable income. So we've got a reconciliation of book and taxable income question. And the way you know is that you're told what the financial accounting book income is and you're asked about the taxable income. Now you could go both, you could go both ways. I could give you taxable income, some adjustments, you get the financial accounting book income. Usually though you're asked, you're given the financial accounting book income and you gotta get to taxable income. The idea here, we're looking at gap or book income versus tax. And the idea is that most of the rules they're equal, but not all of the rules are equal when it comes to considering when income is included or expenses are recorded and whatnot. There are some similarities, but there's also a lot of differences. And these differences result in what we call permanent or temporary differences. Permanent differences are things that will not change. So we treat something for tax purposes or book purposes one way, and then for tax or book the other way or a different way, and it creates this permanent difference. A, a perfect example is municipal bond interest. Municipal bond interest is something that we include in financial accounting income, but we do not include it in tax income. So that's something, and, and it's never going to be included ever for tax purposes. It's excluded. Temporary differences or timing differences, they result in changes over time where if you look at a total period of time, it's the, both both financial accounting and tax take into account the same number, but it's they, there's differences in the, in the dates, in the years. So remember, we have tax years or we have accounting years. There might be a difference in the tax appreciation versus book depreciation in a specific year because of different methods that are used. In tax, we mainly use makers or modify accelerated cost recovery system depreciation. Financial accounting, we use straight line, and it creates this difference in a specific year. But over like a five-year period or the total life of the asset, it will equal the same gap versus tax. So that's really the t different types of differences. Now, again, if you're looking for taxable income, which is what we're doing here, the the goal is to determine taxable income. We're always going to start by looking at the book income. So our book income amount, which is given to us, our book income is $424,000. So let's go ahead and let's start there at step one. So step one, get the book income, and that amount is $424,000. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go through each of the items given to us in the problem, and we're going to adjust for those respective items. So we start with book income and we're going to add and subtract certain things to that amount. So the next thing, book income reflects $130,000 of federal income tax expense. So let's just stop there. Now down below, I'm going to write out uh, gap. We have our income statement. Remember income statement is revenue minus expenses. And that gives us net income or net loss. Here we have a book income, so that's $424,000 of net income. We're being told that in determining book income, $130,000 of federal income tax expense was recorded. Was recorded. So that means that our revenue numbers, which we don't know our revenue numbers, we're not told. We don't know the total expense numbers, but we do know that part of those expenses, $130,000 was tax expense was tax expense. And we're going to see some other numbers that go in there as well. Now, for federal income tax purposes, you're not allowed to deduct federal income taxes, but you are allowed to subtract that away or you must subtract that away for gap purposes and calculate net income. So that $424,000 number, it reflects that. So our second step is to add back. We're going to add back the expense for federal income tax. So we're going to add back our federal income tax expense as determined on the financial statement. And that's going to be, we're going to add back 130,000. So we add back $130,000. All right. So we can put a little check mark next to that one. Done. Next. And also depreciation expense of $55,000. So there's $55,000 of depreciation expense that goes into the calculation of net income on the financial statement. Okay, let's do that as a third item. I'll put a little numbers here as well. One, that's where we got our book, our book income. Two, 
we got the federal income tax expense that we add back. Three, we're told the uh, depreciation expense. So the second item is an example of a permanent difference because for financial accounting purposes, you are you must deduct or you must subtract away the expense for federal income tax, but you can never do that for, for tax purposes. You can never subtract it away. So that's a permanent difference. The third item, which is the depreciation expense, this is going to be a temporary item. The idea is that the depreciation taken will be the same for federal income tax and for um, gap purposes in total years, but this year versus the, the two different uh, gap versus tax, there could be a difference, but it's considered a temporary difference. So we're told book depreciation of $55,000, and I have that down here, and we're told the tax depreciation expense used under makers, which is the method we use for, for tax purposes, we use this maker system, is $65,000, is $65,000. So what we're going to do to take into account this third item of depreciation expense, we're going to add back the amount taken on for book purposes because we're taking book income and whenever expenses, you add them back in and you subtract away what should be taken for tax purposes. So we're going to add back the book depreciation amount because, again, that was used in calculating net income. So we're going to add that back. That's $55,000. And we're going to subtract away, and this is still number three. We're still number three. We're going to subtract away the tax depreciation amount, which we're told is $65,000. Again, for tax purposes, we use Makers Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System, which usually is double decline balance, not always, depends on the asset. For financial accounting, we almost always use straight line. That's probably what's going on here. So that is how we adjust for that item. And now we're going to our fourth item. Pineapple received $25,000 of prepaid rent, not included in book income. The idea here is, this is the fourth item. We'll put this here. And this is also another temporary item. This is also another temporary item. This is not a permanent item. This is a, a difference in timing. The idea is that under the GAAP, under GAAP, um, under generally accepted accounting principles, financial accounting, we record income when it's earned. But for tax purposes, whether you're under the accrual basis, which is what I just referred to, or the cash basis, you're going to have to record that prepaid rent early. You're going to have to record that prepaid rent early. Now, when it comes to the accrual method for tax purposes, there are special rules that might allow you under tax uh, rules to not have to record items just like you do for financial accounting. But for prepaid rent, that's one specifically you must record when you receive prepaid rent. So we're going to have to add that prepaid rent amount. We're going to have to add that in because it's not recorded for, t for book purposes and we're starting with book income. So we have to add that in because for tax purposes, we have to record that. And again, this is specifically a, a temporary item because the idea is that this will eventually have to be recorded on the, on the books and then it won't be reported on the tax because we already reported it and getting taxable income. And finally, step five in this respective item here is to determine our taxable income by just adding and subtracting the numbers. And we're going to get our taxable income, which equals $569,000. So let's just go through and summarize. Again, we start with our book income, $424,000. We go through that and we calculate that and check mark there. And then we adjust for each of the items that were in for the information given because the problem says based only on these items. So we go through the next item, the second item. $130,000 of federal income tax expense, we add that back because for book purposes, yes, you subtract it as an expense, but we don't subtract as a deduction for federal income tax purposes. So we put a check mark on number two. Number three, depreciation expense. There's actually two items. We add back the book depreciation and we subtract the tax depreciation because the number that we're given is book net income. We have to add it back and then subtract it the tax amount to get the actual tax reflected adjustment. You could take the adjustment between these two, which would be a negative um, $10,000. I just showed you that we, it's just the netting or you just put in both of these items. It makes more sense in what you're doing. So then we checked off number three, number four, prepaid rent. We took care of that. So for book purposes, we don't have to record it because we haven't yet earned it. We haven't yet actually performed the rental, um, making it available. But for um, tax purposes, we do because the rules say regardless whether you're the cash method or the accrual method, if it's prepaid rent, you have to record it when you receive it. So we add in the prepaid rent and we checked off number four. And then number five, calculate taxable income by adding and subtracting these. Boom, we get $569,000.